I have both of my butt cheeks, but I have met people who have not. It took a while for me to kind of find out. It was just like changing even... in the room with me. And I was like, are you missing a butt cheek? And he was just like so nonchalant. He was like, yeah. I mean, he was nonchalant because that's his life. But for you, it's like, yeah. holy shit, this guy's missing a butt cheek. Call from Crow. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Um, So I'll get right into what I would like to talk about. I've been uh, wanting to talk about it for a long time. Um, so per se, you are going to um, hook up or date somebody and you only have a singular butt cheek. Do you, uh, do you feel that you must discuss or preface to that person that you are missing an ass cheek. Well, look, you 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 you, you said must. Um, I guess not must, but like you. Um, Would it be a good idea? Obligated. Uh, forget about obligated and must, because those are what is. Uh, there's no authority in this in this universe that you're. Oh, yeah, no, of course Operating not. in. So, uh, are you talking about for your own sake? Um, it's something that has happened to me in the past that I just think about a lot. I, I have both of my butt cheeks, but I have met people who have not. You've had, you've met multiple people who don't have, how do, I'm trying to, I'm imagining in my head what that, does that look like a guy well, with I can't one leg? Everybody always has. Um, so like in, in the instance of somebody that I had dated before who didn't say anything, um, about it, it was kind of like Nemo's little fin, where there was like a little bit of a little bit of cushion on the skin, but no cheek. Cushion on the skin, but no cheek. So was was it was his ass completely flat? Um, he had an, the other cheek, um, but his um, he had a good portion of his other one amputated after he got MRSA. After he got what? MRSA. Is that a butt cheek disease? Uh, it's, uh, infection in your blood, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is not you, okay, because I thought you had a one butt cheek and you were debating whether or not to tell people. This is, you no, have but... somehow, this is kind of, you're like a statistical anonymy. You've hooked up with multiple guys that only have one butt cheek. No, just, just the one, but I can't assume everybody has two butt cheeks after I've met, like, somebody that hasn't, so I just try not to, like, That's, assume That's, you know what? Is. That's good. It's good. You, you shouldn't assume anything. Um... But, you know, can I just, this has nothing to do with anything, but, I like, for a girl hooking up with a guy, you, I feel like from the woman's perspective, you don't really see, I'm like, when I'm thinking about various sexual positions, you don't even really see the guy's butt that much. No, that's, that's, that's why it, like, took a while for me to, like, kind of find out. It was just, like, I can't changing even... in the room with me, and I was like, are you... Are you missing a butt cheek? And he was just like so nonchalant. He was like, "Yeah." Like, <laughs> well, he was. Well, he, I mean, he was nonchalant because that's his life. But for you, it's like, yeah. holy shit, this guy's missing a butt cheek. But no, I, I'm trying to think of any. I don't think there. I'm trying to think of any sexual position where you are even looking at a guy's butt, unless if you would be like pegging him. Yeah, that I can't think of as any either. The thing is, he also had an entire. Um, upper row of teeth, an extra one behind his front, or yeah, behind his upper teeth. And uh, I used to make the joke to him, how many teeth can you trade for a butt cheek? And he gets so mad. <laughs> you sounds like you're bullying this man. Oh, entirely. <laughs> Why did you guys meet? Uh, we went to school together. Okay. Um... And so you okay? And you started this conversation by asking me if I feel as though somebody is obligated to uh, disclose their missing butt cheek before hooking or up. Or if somebody, personally correct? you would be like, "Hey, I, I'm missing a butt cheek." Um, are you saying that because did you feel swindled? Did you feel as though you signed up for a a full cheeked man and and received a single cheeked man? What was the deal? No, no, not not at all. I just was like reflecting on the situation myself because like um i need to like walk with crutches and stuff and sometimes like if i were to meet somebody like that i was first talking to online i would preface i'm like oh yeah i i walk with crutches and i was just like i wonder if i'd do that if i was missing a butt cheek 
Um, it's not a disability or anything. I know. Well, look, I, I think if I were, um, well, it would depend. I don't think I would bring it up on the first. I wouldn't bring it up at dinner. I would probably, if I, I would probably, if I only had one butt cheek and I was getting intimate with somebody new, I would probably bring it up like <laughs> right before we would take our clothes off. Just so that they're not um, thrown off. Yeah, it's like, you you know, you ask like the STD question, you ask the butt cheek question. I'd get everything on the table. So ever since you met this guy, have you started asking men how many butt cheeks they have? And if so, how I've, is that? How what have the responses been like? I've thought about it. Um, I never have, and everybody since has had both of their butt cheeks. Hmm. Um, did, but, now the did you did you did you have a problem with the lack of the butt cheek? Did it was it a, no. a did it impede your sexual experience at all? No, and I mean, it's made a funny story for the, the remainder of my days. That's so um, funny that you you were making fun of this guy for having no... Uh, what the fuck was that? Did you hear that just now? Nope. Okay, never mind. Uh, all right, we can cut that part out. Um, or we can leave it down. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, all right. Um, oh, it's just, just funny to me that you were making fun of this guy uh, for like having one butt cheek. And he got he was upset by that, and now, uh, however many years it's been since you um, stopped talking to him, you continue to you can you continue to bully him for having one butt cheek. Oh yeah, he tried to kill me. It's fine. <laughs> How did he try to kill you? Um, he uh, held me up against the wall by my neck and then pushed a knife to my stomach. Oh Jesus Please. Christ. Well, yeah, you know, I think did... it might have been all the anger from his butt cheek being gone. I think it really like tore him apart. Or so this is did you like date this guy or you were just kind of hooking yeah. up with him? Yeah. I dated this guy for like a year. Did, how did what how did things escalate to that? Oh, I don't I he was he's a little a little unhinged. He just kind of wanted to do the the thing of being like I want to prove to you that I could kill you. So that you're like kind of afraid of me, so I'm gonna like kind of try to kill you. Holy fuck! We didn't stay together much longer after that. Yeah, I feel like that would turn me off of one-cheeked men forever. I would, uh, if I were you, I would forever look at uh, the lack of two cheeks as an indicator of something much darker. Yeah, we should like maybe on dating profiles or something. It's yeah. like, all right, age, height, zodiac sign, butt cheek status. Yeah. Not necessarily. I got there are probably guys listening to this who only have one butt cheek that are like it's not all of us, but There's you're one for what you're one for one, one <laughs> on single cheeked guys being maniacs. <laughs> how's your how's your uh, life, uh, uh, dating life now? Are you are you with the two cheek a two cheeker? Yep, he's got he's got both of his cheeks and maybe a few nice. extra in his basement. That 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 makes him sound worse than the first guy what you just said <laughs> no not at all he's he's great we live together that's good it's a happy life um well crow is uh there anything else that you wanted to um talk about before we go honestly i i think that was it i got my answer and it was great talking to you great talking to you too i i wish you many more years of not getting threatened by knife point and of living a happy, <laughs> healthy, beautiful life. What do you what do you do what do you do with your life? I I'm know. a full time artist. Oh, cool. What do you what kind of art do you make? Um, so I make a lot of it out of recycled toys. I have a um, project with waste conservation, um, of teaching like classes at libraries and stuff of uh kids and adults on how to make different objects for things so they don't go in the garbage. Nice. What? So, like, you take things that people... You'll take, like, a cup and turn it into a Barbie. Um, 
more like he'll we'll take old Barbies and tear them apart and turn the heads into earrings. Or um, my main thing is we'll take old like teddy bears and stuff and we'll we'll gut them and everything and then we'll turn them into bags or backpacks. Oh, dude, you make the kind of shit from like Sid's room from Toy Story. Yeah, I've heard that one a lot. That's a that's a nickname. <laughs> so you make but, terrifying uh, looking toys. Oh, I, I've done that before, too. Some of them are genuinely really cute, but, like, a lot of times people request that I make them a bag and they, like, want an extra head on it or something. Like, oh, okay, I could do that. I'm like, well, I got this body laying around. So, like, I made, like, an elephant body baby head purse. That one's still for mm-hmm. sale. Mm-hmm. Have you ever made a doll with one butt cheek? That kind of sounds like it's in the same vein. I, I didn't, but that sounds like a very therapeutic art project. Um, would it be therapeutic recent- or would it be... Like a reminder. I'm not sure. One of my recent art pieces that I did is I took a um, big ball gown skirt and I, did, I like sewn a bunch of old toys and stuff that was like from my house and stuff as a kid and some new ones too. And my partner and I went out the backyard and we lit the toys and stuff on fire. So they're all singed and melted and burned. And then I uh, put it on a mannequin and the piece was called Let Go. And mm. there was a little sign on the front that said "Let Go." I like that. That's cool. Do you, do, when you're looking at the toys melting, do you are you imagining them screaming in your head? Um, no, not necessarily. It was kind of windy that day, so as the toys were melting, I'm going, "Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit!" And my partner's like whacking fire with a oven mitt. Mm. This is quite you, and this is your full time job is making these these yep. crazy things. Yeah, I have an Etsy store um, and everything, too, so that's been, like, part of my uh, income as well, but, yeah. Drop your shit. What's your Instagram? Um, Casual underscore crow. Casual underscore crow. All right, I'll check you out. What's the most fucked up looking thing you've ever made? Um, okay, so this one, there's a two-part series where I had, um a Mario body that was a backpack with Chuck E. Cheese's head, and that one was named Rat Face Stanley. Rat and then there was Stanley. another one that was Luigi's body with Garfield's head that was Garfo. Man, are you afraid? Are you ever afraid that, like, Nintendo is going to come after you? Or who makes Garfield? The Garfield's lawyer is going to come kinda, after you? Kind of deal. I've had copyright issues with, uh, like, uh, Etsy and stuff before, but a lot of the stuff I could like definitely say is parody. So mm-hmm. there's, yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, Etsy is like original pieces I made. They're like, oh no, oh no, ooh, woo, that's copyright. I'm like, this is a picture that I like painted of my turtle. What? <laughs> yeah, now, okay, now before we go, do you have, um, what's your dream? creation what's your like thing that you let's say you had unlimited resources to create the most fucked up abomination that your your brain can conceive of what what what's what's what are we doing i'm imagining like a whole have you seen the the art piece of the um of the robot that bleeds and cleans itself up no, I, I'm I'm gonna look that up. I I don't remember the tonight. official name of that. It's really cool. It's very sad. It's really cool. Um, so I'm picturing like a like a white room, and then uh, on the floor just like entirely melted mannequins, but there's still like parts of their scalp and tufts of hair, so you know what it was like supposed to be. Although it's you know just a pile of like skin tones hmm. how long have you been doing this for how does one even get into this um so i have i've done art for most of my life I'm, I'm 23 right now um and i went to school for graphic design and like kind of kicked and screamed through the whole thing but the time i was homeless so i was like well i have to stay in college because like i don't have anywhere else to go um, so I finished that degree and then I left and I was just like, man, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't really want a secret graphic design job. So I had, uh, 
um, started doing this and I was lucky enough on, on TikTok to kind of blow up a while ago. Yeah. Um, and that was able to like kind of secure my income. And I was like bouncing around couch surfing for a while too. So I was, I was really grateful to have that and be able to like figure myself out. That's awesome. It sounds like you've been through a ton of bullshit. I'm glad to hear that you're you're thriving, doing something cool. Thank you. What casual underscore crow? Yep. All right, man. I'll check you out. I got uh, Do you, you have a picture on there of the Luigi Garfield? That's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, I'm I'm not sure. There might be. Um, Can you make rat face family? <laughs> Can you make my? Can you put my head on Spider Man's body and Scooby Doo's legs? Yeah. Okay. I would sick. just need to like either find all the parts or like order it. I I get stuff from like eBay and stuff too, of people that are just like, well, I don't want to throw this out, and it's like broken to ways. I'm like, ah, oh, parts. Man, no, I love this. Sounds like a cool idea. I'm I'm, I'm gonna check you out. Casual awesome. underscore crow. All right. Crow, is there anything else that you want to say to the people of the computer or to me or to God before we go? <laughs> um, be after sex, eat both of your butt cheeks. Have a good night. Gak, bless you, Crow. Thank you. All right. My, my feet, He-Man's uh, legs... Uh, Homer Simpson's penis. Uh, Sonic's torso. And give me what's a a head. Give me a head. Um, oh, the penguin from Surf's Up's head. Let's do that. Call from Jay Wally. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, not much. What What's up with you? Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a lonely night for me. Um, okay. And I was watching the stream and stuff, so I figured uh, I'd just call and chat with you. What? Are you, what's uh, uh? Why is it so lonely? Um, I'm in a hotel right now. I'm on the road away from home um, for work and uh, I I was just watching the stream and stuff uh, so yeah that that's why I, I tried to call and I didn't expect to to be on the line right now what so I'm you, kinda I'm kind of scared what, what what are you traveling for uh, for work okay what do you do um, I, uh, I do boring government stuff, um, for, um, a specific place in the world. And, Canada. uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, all right, you work for the government of, does Canada have a government? I don't like this. What is going on over there? Do you guys do stuff? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, we're just uh, a bunch of happy people drink uh, maple syrup and stuff. But no, uh, it's like the it's like a USA 2.0, but with less guns and more thank yous. More Kinda. thank yous. Do, do do you feel do people say thank you more in Canada than in the U.S.? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I I went to the U.S. a little bit and. Um, I mean, when people order stuff in restaurant, you rarely hear them say, oh, can I have this, please? And then thank you. It's more like, yeah, I'm going to get that. But in Canada, if you don't say please and thank you, you're like a, a big asshole, you know? So do you, you're you feeling lonely. Do you have, like, do you, in general, do you have friends and family? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's just that I, I'm like, probably 10 hours away from from my home right now so i'm just staying in a hotel by myself tonight but no i'm i'm not lonely in general i have a pretty decent family and a really hot wife (laughs) all right so what the fuck are you calling me for go call your hot wife (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, she, she, she's at a dinner right now, so uh, that's why I'm, I'm lonely. She Normally, I would call her, but she's at a dinner with, with uh, way, some friends. By the way, that's a hilarious... You just, the way that you described that was hilarious. You said, I have a pretty decent family and a hot wife. So yeah. you have a... Like, what makes them pretty decent? Uh, well, I mean, it depends of, of uh, your interpretation of pretty decent. But for me, pretty decent is, like, very, very good. Okay. You know? Uh, what What's... Because when you say pretty decent, that's like uh, you, you're, you like, referring to your children as, like, they're okay. Which, by the way, is, just so you know, a perfectly legitimate way. To oh, no, but, but um, I, I was more... Um, I was more talking about my extended family because uh, we I, I don't have any kids. I just have a, a, a cat, um, a wife, and uh, just uh, like brothers, sisters, and parents. That's who I was referring to. Um, but no, we don't have any kids yet. Okay, where did you meet your hot wife? Um, you know, you're asking that question, and uh, I feel like uh, that's a great story to tell. I. I wasn't calling to tell that story, but uh, if you want to hear it, I can tell you about it. Well, um, uh, well, you said, w- were you calling for something? You weren't calling for any particular reason. Uh, n- not really. I figured I, I was just going to go on the fly and, and see what would happen. But now that you asked that question, uh, I feel like it's a pretty decent decent story to tell. Okay, well, now that I know that for you, decent is, is a good thing, I would love to hear the story. <laughs> okay, um, I, I'll try to make it short. Um, so I I was uh, working out of the province, um, and, and so for the American listeners, uh, province is just uh, the Canadian word for state. Um, so I was working out of province uh, on construction back in the days, I, I'd say like 10 years ago. Um, and uh, I decided to sell my car when I came back uh, from in, in my original province. Uh, so so I, I put my car on sale on a, a website that's called uh, Kijiji. It's like Craigslist, I guess. Um, but we don't have Craigslist in, in Canada, so I was using that website. Um, so I, I came back home from work and uh, some someone came to visit me to buy my car. And uh, it's that hot lady that came um so uh we spent a couple hours together looking at the car drove and uh, then she wasn't sure if she was gonna buy it or not and she ended up deciding to buy it um so after because i'm a good person uh, i provided her with uh after sale consultation and some text to understand how the car was going, if she she was all right with the the car and stuff. And a week later, we we went on our first date. And now uh, she's my wife. She's been my wife for 10 years. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. That's cool that you still find her hot after 10 years. Oh, I mean, we're 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 still pretty young, too. So um, like like I'm, I'm 29 and she's 29, too. So, I mean, we're not really old so she's still hot and i i think she has a lot of hotness left in her mm-hmm. if you know what i mean so when people ask where I we guess, meet yeah. um i say well we we meet we met on a uh, a car uh, sales website it's kind of weird but that's how it happens some people meet on tinder or facebook dating i guess we we met on autotrader.com you know, um, that's cool that you guys could. T- a lot of people, for some reason, people are like, uh, they they think of twenty nine as like old, which is crazy to me. Uh yeah. I mean, they some people do think that it, it it's kind of old, but for me, I, I don't think of it like that. I I still have a because one thing I noticed is that w- when I turned eighteen. I, I, I feel like everything after that is just a number. Like, I, I feel like I stayed pretty much the same person 
from 18 to now, but I'm just getting older with the number. And also my body is getting shittier, but like, you know, that the brain kind of stays the same. I don't know if you know what I, uh, where I'm, I'm getting at with that, you know? Do you feel as though you're the same person at uh, 29 as you were when you were 19? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean, a little bit more responsibility with, with like, money and adulting shit, but, like, I still feel like I'm the same person. Because when you compare, like, 12 years old to 15 to 16 to 18, it feels like you're, you're a different person every step of the way. But, like... Now that I'm 29, when I look back at, at when I was 20, I feel like a, yeah, same person, just different age number. No? Hmm. Uh. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Like, well, I don't know. I, I every dude. It's, I mean, for me, every fucking month of my life, I feel like I'm a different uh, person. <laughs> Every month, I'm like, man, last month, I was really fucking stupid. But this, this month, I'm, a, I'm finally a real adult. Yeah? And what, what, the, what is it that you did recently that made you think of yourself as, as a, a stupid person or as that you did something stupid? I'd like you to share that with us. Oh, man. Now you're the therapy gecko. Let me think. That's a good question, man. That's a good question. I think, um, ah, oh, man, just a lot of like, uh, like, I, you know, yeah, like I'll get into an argument with somebody and then I'll be like, why was I upset about that thing? You know, or like I'll, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, just, just, ge just, I had a fuck. I wish I had a more specific example, but just general irresponsibility. That um, I, I feel as though I uh, 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 learn from each day. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But I mean, if 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 you're not really able to find like a really precise explanation, maybe you're not acting as stupid as you think you are, right? Sometimes, maybe it's just a matter of stopping, looking where you are in life, and being like, "Yeah, fuck, I got it," you know. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm too hard on myself. Yeah, I mean, you're you're sitting. I I don't know. If, I I don't know if you're sitting at home right now, or if it's like an office or anything. You, you don't you don't have to say that. Um, but you have to look at w what you built, right? You you have an audience right now. People are are watching you, and True. they're obviously entertained by what you're doing. So I feel like you should be proud of yourself, no? Ah, oh, thanks, man. Jeez, you guys really are a lot nicer in Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm trying to to represent my fellow Canadians, uh, friends. Well, you know, man, you uh -huh. you, you no, man, you really called in like I'm alone in a hotel. I thought you were like suicidal, man. You called in like I'm alone in a hotel room. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I was like, no, 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 to, no. You know, be your friend for you know uh, ten minutes. And he, and it's totally flipped. You've you fucking um, you know you got into my brain. Yeah. Help me well, out. I, yeah. It, well, I mean, the helper always needs to to get help once in a while. You know. What part of uh, Canada are you in? Do you do you, are you are you anywhere near Toronto or Vancouver? Uh, no, neither of neither of. I'm uh, from the the uh, only uh, French part of Canada. Oh, uh, Montreal. Uh, well, yeah. Well, Montreal is is the the biggest city of the province. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you I, do yeah. you speak? Are you like? Do you speak French? Uh yes. My first language is uh, French, but I I did work uh, for over three four years in uh, English provinces, so yeah. um, I was able to learn English that way. Well, it's funny because you, I, you, your accent sounds Canadian, but there's you also do sound a little European. Maybe like, like I would, like if you told me you were German, I would believe you. Well, I, I, I guess that's uh, that's probably the, the, the mixture of Canadian and, uh, and the, French. the the French Canadian, yeah. And I, I also learned my 
uh, English in Alberta. So it probably sounds a little bit uh, redneck Canadian. Uh, that's probably a, a reason too. So I have like probably, I guess, three different accent in there. Uh, mm. So what does your wife do if you, I still don't really know what you do. Uh, you work yeah, for the so, government. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, I, I feel like it, it would be too boring and or complicated to get into that in, in, in that call and, and that's not really the important thing, but uh, my uh, lovely hot wife uh, works um, in, uh, I guess, in a hospital, uh, healthcare kind of kind of thing. Uh, she do tests for hearts, brains, and nerves and shit. Some smart people thing that I can't really understand. You know? Sounds hot. What? I said it sounds hot. Yeah, it, it kind of sounds hot because one one of the tests she actually does is um, for uh, for I, I guess guys in general that have um, problem for their uh, for for their wieners to go up, you know, erectile yeah. dysfunction. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a test that um, she puts uh, electrodes on those guys' penises, and she fucking shocks them. Have you, you ever know? asked her to do that to you? No. Um, I thought about it, but I never asked her. Um, but now that you say it, I mean, I guess I, sh I sh should I? Well, I don't know. I don't know if is that. Um, I think in in the U.S. at least, like you, there's a th you can't like be uh, the the patient of one of your family members. I think like you yeah. can't have like your dad be your doctor and shit, but like, I don't know, Canada, there's no fucking laws or anything. So you could probably do it there. Yeah. Well, with like, I mean, if I, I don't know if you have a girlfriend or not and like, you don't have to divulge that information, but I mean, if you had a girlfriend and sure. she, she was to, to be like a professional at shocking penises with, yeah. Would you like and and there's no like there's no issue with uh, like policies and rules and regulation and like she's free to do anything she wants. W would you like ask her to shock your penis? Uh, mm, mm. Well, your your wife is she shocking hard penises or soft penises? No, no. <laughs> she's trying. She's. I assume. Well, if it's because if it's guys who are having erectile dysfunction, I assume. I assume she's shocking soft penises to make to like wake them up, make them hard again. Yeah, I, I. Well, I mean, I'm not really sure, but I, I guess if she's doing it because they can't have a boner, I mean, yeah. I. I guess they're doing it to test the nerves. Okay, on, I have an answer. I have penis. an answer to your question. The answer is no, and here's why. Because um, yeah, I'm listening. One of one of two things is going to happen, right? Either I'm going to like it or I'm not. And if I don't yeah. like it, it's probably going to be an unpleasant experience for me. And if I do like it, now I'm going to have to fucking shock my penis every time I want to uh, come. And so yeah. I would... I would rather, even if like it was some undiscovered thing that is is very sexually pleasurable, I'd rather be ignorant to it, because um, if if I realized that's what I was into, I'd have to buy a bunch of expensive equipment and I'd have to re, you know, go wash the pads every five you know times, and it'd be it'd be a whole thing. So I don't think it's a beneficial. No benefit could come from it. Yeah. What about you? Would you let your wife shock her penis? I guess I I guess I'd try it. Yeah. She's a professional uh, penis shocker. Yeah, I mean, she knows what is she, she knows what she's doing, right? What like I mean, the question I mean, I I feel like your response is 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 not a great one. Um Why not? because I I I feel like you you decided to side more on 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 the the fear side of your brain than like being adventurous 
uh, oh the, don't you think? You're like, yeah, I, I feel like I prefer not to try just in case I like it. But what what's bad about liking it? You know, like, w what are you afraid of about liking your penis getting shot? Dude, will you be my therapist? I, I actually need you in my life to tell me these things. <laughs> You're 100% I, I, <laughs> correct. I, I, you know what? I, I don't know what. I don't know where over the years I've like just lost myself. You know, I. You're right, man. You're right. I, 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 I. You know what? I'm being a little bit serious here. I, I do live a lot of. I, I, I. You know, I, 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 I put on a show like I'm, you know, uh, uh, not scared of anything. But I, I, I've been living by fear too much, and this thing that we're talking about right now of me saying that I would be too scared to shock my penis is a great yep. example of that. And you're right. I needed you to tell me that. I'm going to try to stop living yep. by my fear. Um, and if for whatever reason we we get into a situation where your wife asks me to shock my penis. Yeah, I, yeah I don't feel like my wife would, would ask you to you shock your penis, but I, I was more talking about, like, your wife, if you had one, right? Like, the, my wife, unfortunately, is not for rent or for sale, um, so that's that's number one. But I, I would encourage you um, to find yourself a wife that could shock your penis. But coming back to the, that fear... I that need a said, picture of you with that quote underneath it to look at every morning <laughs> when I wake up. Do, do you think that the the costume and the face paint you put is yeah. is a way for you to like express your personality without actually being yourself because yeah you're afraid to express who you are while being yourself No it's not a fear thing but it's a I mean look most most people who are going to hear this conversation right now they hear it on audio, so they don't even like know that I'm wearing a costume right now. It's it's my voice. It's me, but uh, you. you know, uh, I mean, as far as the costume goes, uh, well, I just hey, look. If I if I had like a if I got on here and I was like, hey folks, I'm Lyle, and this is the Lyle Show, starring me, Lyle. I, you know, I'd feel like yeah. such a fucking douchebag. I don't want to do that. I like being a weird, unexplainable. Uh, uh, cryptid thing. Yeah, I'm like a little creature. It's fun. Yeah, and that. Yeah, I guess, and that. That's how you were able to uh, become famous by being the therapy gecko, right? What's in, What's in the mini bar of this hotel? Uh, do you mean like um, in in my room? Yeah. Uh, no, there's fuck all. Mini bars and hotels aren't really a thing in Canada, unfortunately, I guess. There's nothing in there? It's just like an empty uh, refrigerator? Are you a drinker? Are, Can are Canadians big drinkers? Uh, I, I'd say, it, yeah, I guess. I, okay. Prob probably more than in the U.S. Um, yeah, yeah, I, especially I'd say in the eastern part of Canada, uh, I guess we're pretty big beer drinker. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, mm, is, right. is, is there is, is there anything else that you wanted to to share with me tonight? To I, you're Lyle? you are you are really pulling the fucking reverse Uno card on me right now. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say. I was like, "All right, what do I know about you? Are you you have a hot wife who shocks people's penises. Yeah. Um, you work for the Canadian government. Uh, you're in a hotel room right now. Wait, I forgot your name. Um, you can call me Jay. Jay. Yeah. I don't know, Jay. Is there anything else? You seem like an interesting guy. I know that you're 29. Well, is there anything else that you want to say? Or tell us before we go. No, no I, I, I feel like uh, I'll, I'll let some other people um, share their life story with you. But um, uh, it, it, it was great talking to you. Um, yeah. And also, fun, fun fact, for the last week, I've been going to sleep uh, while listening to your podcast because oh, your voice cool. is, is so calming. Oh, um, thanks, man. And I, I know you're wondering, but no, I, I I haven't had any wet dreams because I've been listening to your podcast. Why did you think I was thinking? wondering that? 
because I know you were. Like I, <laughs> I, I just know it. Right, I, I, I read you like a book. That's all. You know, I like you, man. I totally thought this was going to be a bummer, and I would have to convince you to, um, you know, <laughs> fucking put the pills down. But you, you, you convinced me to fucking do that. So, well, thanks, but thank you. Let me know um, where, where uh, you know, where where I can pay you for your services. Just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But um, Jay from 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 the the French Canadian province. Um, Good talking yeah. to you, ma'am, and uh, keep living your yeah. your best life. Uh, do you feel less lonely now? Uh, yeah, I do feel less lonely, uh, but I I also hope that uh, you, you will from from now on you'll start uh, living your life um, a little bit further away from the the fear side of your brain and okay. be more adventurous. All right. All right, I will. I will. You don't I'm need to pay to me. You don't need to pay me. You just you just need to to do that, and and it'll it'll make me go to heaven, right? I will shock my penis so that you can go to heaven. That's great. My my hot wife and 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 myself will be happy that you shocked your penis. Hey, stay uh, stay frosty, Jay. Hey, okay. you too. See, I know I'm going to like it. I know I'm going to like it. And then I have to f- fucking go on Amazon and search. I don't even know what the medical term is for a penis shocking machine. And it probably costs several hundreds of dollars. But that's fear talking, goddammit. And I'm not living by that anymore. Call from... Caroline. Hello? Whoa. What's up? I got in. That's crazy. How you doing, Caroline? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Have we ever spoken before, Caroline? No, we have not. Well, uh, what's what's up with you? What's going on? Oh, you know, just living life, trying to uh, exist. Okay. Um... Living life and trying to exist. That's the best thing you could ever try. That's really that's really what everybody's doing, whether they know they are or not. That's fair. That's fair. Um, it's totally cool if not, we can uh, you know, just shoot the shit. But is there anything in particular that you called in to want to talk about? Yeah, actually. Uh so uh have a therapist IRL, but why not talk to a gecko too about it, you know? Sure. So, uh, I'm a lesbian, woo, uh, and I've been dating my girlfriend for six years. Nice. And we are trying to start getting into, like, open relationship stuff. Ooh, okay. And it's really scary. Mmm. Mmm. Um... Tell me, tell okay. So tell me what the uh, what led up to the trying. Who who brought it up? What what? How did you how did you get here? Um, I she brought it up first. Actually, she um. So again, like about a year after us dating, she was just kind of like, "Hey, I think I'm asexual." Mm. And I'm like, "Okay, well, I'm not, but I yeah. like what we have going on, and we've been riding right. that for um about five years." Really? Yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's one of those things, like, the more I've looked into it, the more I've realized other people deal with this. And I want it to become, like, a norm of, like, hey, like, it's okay to be non-monogamous. Hmm. So, your your girlfriend told you she was asexual, you said, five years ago? And so, um, have you not had sex in five years? Probably about then. Oh no, no! It's been it's been pro. Uh, it was January of last year. Not that I'm keeping track. Okay. <laughs> and so was it? So did she bring it up as kind of a like, listen, I am asexual, and I know that you have a a desire which I cannot fill, and I I I love you and want you to be able to fulfill your desire. So we should open open the gates. Essentially, yeah. Like she just she's she just knows that there's like things that. 
she can't provide for me, but we have a very healthy and happy relationship otherwise. Right. So what you t- you're saying you're scared. Why you what do you, tell me what the scaredness is about? It's just the unknown and also haven't like tried to date or flirt or hook up with anybody in 6 years. So you yeah. know that's kind of weird. Well, is the, the is is the idea of like I don't know what your what the game plan would be, but is the idea of like Going, uh, hopping on the Tinder or the the going to the club or doing whatever to try to go and like hook up with people is that is that like an exciting idea to you at all? A little bit. Like I I, I like like I like being flirted with, <laughs> so that's nice. But like I'm just a generally awkward person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. um yeah. Well, well, if you're if the whole thing is like, oh, I I'm I hate the idea of going out and trying to get laid. Is that it? And or is that oh, not yet, but is that a part of it? For me? Yeah. No, not really cuz like, I don't know, I'm so, like I'm not really like a one-night stand kind of person. I've done okay. it a couple times and it always felt really weird and bad. Okay. But that's also when I was trying to be straight and hooking up with guys, and that sucked. So mm-hmm. no offense, men. Um. So. So then, what? Tell me, what is? What's your ideal situation? I guess someone like that. I'm like friends with that we can hook up with. A little and friends with benefits be, like, situation. You know, a, yeah, but also like not like. She, like, again, like, my girlfriend, like, she wants to be, like, aware. Like, it's not some big secret thing. But also, I don't think she's, like, really wanting to be, like, oh, I have to know every single detail of what's happening. Okay. Um, yeah. Are you, like, what's your what's your therapist told you? You said you've talked to a therapist. What did they say? That, well, we, we didn't get a ton into it. She was just kind of more affirming the, like, that it's okay to be scared and it's okay to be uncomfortable with things like this. And like, good job me and my girlfriend for trying to start something new and be open and communicate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, and she recommended a, um, she recommended a, a book, an audio book I've been listening to um, called a uh, pen and secure by oh gosh what's the what's the author's name jessica fern pan secure by jessica fern it's all about be, uh different consensual non-monogamy mm, okay what's like a pan secure uh pan yeah oh sorry poly secure poly secure oh poly secure poly secure okay so you're trying to pa- yeah. practice what what it, what they call ethical non-monogamy yeah okay and like from what I've listened to of this book so far, it makes it seem like it's actually something that, like, a lot of people might benefit from. I'm sure. And, like, it's just not, like, a social norm, and there's a lot of, I guess, stigma around it and misunderstanding of what that means. Because there's so many, like, the things that I've learned from this book so far is that there's so many different levels of consensual non-monogamy. Mm. What, so tell me about the, know, like... Like, is there a, uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is a stupid question, but is there, like, a level that you identify with on these on these, these levels that have been laid out for you? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's not a stupid question at all. Um, I think it's kind of more of, like, there's, like, monogamish and slash... Monogam- monogamish. <laughs> is yeah, it no, that, I hate it. It's, 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 I hate that that's the term because it sounds... No, silly. what do you mean you hate that that's the term? That's a fantastic term, monogamish. And also, I didn't come up with it, so I I learned it. So. That's a great. I've never heard that before. That's a great term to describe uh, it's something. A, it's like you know, monogamous slash like open relationship where like most of the emotional um and uh you know most of like the emotional support you get comes from your main relationship. Again, I, I pardon anyone who's listening who I'm getting this wrong. I don't want to misquote the book. Um, but you get. Essentially, your emotional support from your main partner and then any 
sexual support that you don't feel like you're lacking, you can seek elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you said that the book is making you realize that, that uh, there's a lot more people out there doing this than, than maybe you had thought. And it's like, yeah, I, I mean, f dude, fucking uh, 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 human sexuality and, and emotions and relationships are like so infinitely complicated and very infinitely across the eight trillion people that live on the earth that like, you know, to, to confine it to, to one thing um you know is a crazy is is to me a crazier idea than uh uh you know deviating from the norm um okay so you're reading this book and you're like oh i think yeah. i might want to be monogamish um mm -hmm. what and so like do you have a i don't know a a a, a game plan at all of how you want to go out and meet people or like uh how you want to kind of uh what, what you want to do to move forward in this next phase of your relationship that you're looking into exploring uh that's kind of what i'm figuring out there's this app that i downloaded i already forgot the name of it but it's for like people like looking for you know unconventional interactions and relationships and stuff and like I don't live in a small town but it's also not like a big city so like I kind of scrolled through the entire um <laughs> the entire um uh listing <laughs> essentially already so um, I don't think that's going to be the answer okay so you're not an app kind of gal well I mean to be fair my, my girlfriend and I we met on tinder again six years ago so like mm -hmm. i like i do believe there's it, there's something to it sure and i don't know i don't even remember how to meet people like i've just been in a, a relationship for so long so you know it's a weird it's, it's a weird, weird thing um being single because there's uh there's excitement to it as well as anxiety to it yeah and the thing is like it's I don't know, it's kind of the excitement of being like, ooh, like, maybe this will be something, but also right. not, because I have a lot of support and stuff that I need <laughs> already. Right. So, right. like, I'm not, I don't know. Right. I don't know, like, I was out with some friends the other night, and, like, one of them who's by, she was, like, kind of flirting with me, and I was like, oh, wow, I forgot what this is like, because she's, like, aware of the whole becoming open situation i don't think she's actually interested in becoming a part of that but i was just okay like, oh it how did nice that be with by someone else that's so nice okay it felt so it felt nice to be to be to be flirted with with this person did that did her flirting with you um kind of like um uh uh, uh make you because you said you were feeling scared about this whole thing and then here's a little yeah. sliver of it. You're getting you're you're flirting with somebody outside of your relationship. Uh, was that exciting to you? Did that did that help you navigate your your scaredness at all? Yeah, I definitely think so. And also the fact just knowing that like my girlfriend is okay with this. Like That's exciting. it was just kind of like it, it. There was like no guilt involved. Um. Hmm. And so, so like, it's, um, just, like, it's like a whole new world because like, it's just this whole thing where, I don't know, society has just told us like, no, you're not supposed to do that. You're in a relationship. But like, if the boundaries are set, you can act within those boundaries as much as you want. Yeah. Well, I don't, I think that, you know, it's, you can, two, two consenting adults can live beyond what uh, society, uh, you know, tells them is what they're supposed to be doing um yeah absolutely and uh i don't know also it's just like it's not who gives a shit it's not anyone else's life but uh yours you know it, exactly and um people i i've heard people say like oh polyamory doesn't work and whatever and i have no fucking idea um but not, yeah, nothing, no, I don't nothing either. works I honestly don't not, either. Not, <laughs> the people are people like polyamory doesn't work nothing fucking monogamy doesn't work nothing it works nothing works at all uh, we're just giving everything our best shot. Yeah, yeah. it's... 
I don't know. Life's weird and relationships are weird. And I don't understand why we've made these rules that we live with. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, look, and that's not to say that uh, people who who do have uh, conventional relationships, um, you know, are doing it. Nobody are doing it wrong. Nobody's doing it wrong. Oh no, ab- absolutely just, not. Like, absolutely not. Yeah, and, and there's there's just, everyone's just fi- figuring out what works for them. Um, what is your name again? Ca- oh, it's Caroline. <laughs> Caroline. How many yes. times did I ask you your name yes, on this indeed. phone call? Just once. Just once. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, what, what, uh, what's next for you, Caroline? What do you, what, what's next in this journey that you're on? That's the part I'm trying to figure out. It's kind of weird. Like, and I, I don't know. My girlfriend and I had like a long talk about it yesterday about like, all right, like, what does this look like? And a lot of it is unknown and we're just going to kind of figure it out as we go. Yeah, you know, I've t- I, I I take relationship calls on here a lot because it's you know such a um, it's not only the thing that people on here want to talk about uh, the most, but also just what everybody. I mean, people are obsessed with um, they're yeah. obsessed with fucking each other and being in love with each other, and you can tell that because um, all every every song ever written is about. Um, <laughs> You know, a guy who wants to fuck a girl or a girl who wants to f- fuck a guy or be in love with them or it's all everyone wants to talk about is, you know, um, uh, uh, the, rom- the just the general romantic sexual sphere of life. Um, and yeah. it's so uh, – and it's complicated. I don't think anyone ever has – I don't think there is, it exists to have it uh, figured out. You know, I'm not going to pretend that yeah, I and have again, that's any the whole, that's idea. That's the whole thing too is like with – you know, like, again, like, the, the thing with society and, like, again, the media with songs and movies and everything, it's always, like, guy gets girl, happy two people together, and everything's perfect. But that's not the case a lot no, of the time. Yeah, no, not at all. Like, um, it's... So, I don't know. I just... I don't know. Part of me just wants to put that out there for anyone who's, like, has dealt or is dealing with anything similar or will deal with it in the future. Like, you're not alone. Um, Caroline, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Uh, uh, be chill and, you know, live and let live. Live and let live. Unless if you're, um, uh, an ant in my car. My car was infested with ants uh, a few months ago. Oh no! F- and well, well, fuck those. Yeah, no, I, 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 and I like hired somebody. I hired somebody to kill all of those ants. I did not let those ants live, so I can't. As someone who's had an ant infestation in their car as well, they deserve to die. So there we go. We put a little asterisk next to next to live and let live that needed to be there. Thank you very much. If you're Caroline. human, then yeah, bye. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> have a good night, Caroline. Thank you. You too. You know, I bet ant. I bet ant relationships. I bet you know. I'm talking all about how relationships are complicated. I bet ant relationships aren't complicated. I bet ants. Well, ants talk. Do they do the little antenna thing? But I bet ants just kind of fuck, and that's it. I don't think ants get married. Do are 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 animals monogamous? People have done research about this. I'm sure, but I don't. I don't know. I'm just a guy in a gecko costume pontificating about science that I'm just sitting at a computer. I could Google it. I'm going to Google this right now while I'm on the stream. Hold on. We're going to put this in the podcast. Are animals monogamous? Uh, okay. Um, oh, apparently wolves, animals that mate for life. Gray wolf, an, an alpha male and his female partner are basically a power couple in the wolf um, place in wolves. Monogamy in animals. Now I'm on Wikipedia. Um, there's social monogamy. I just realized I'm trying to put this as like a one minute end, end book to this uh, phone call. But... 
there's too much information here. Just go to the Wikipedia page for monogamy in animals and, um, you know, scroll down it for about two seconds and then go play Minecraft. The relative size of male testicles often reflect mating systems. All right, I'm going to get off of this. 